Hey everyone, um, this is going to be the supplemental video to the 486 um, upgrades that I did just before and this is uh, the tutorial that I learned um, from the WinWorld PC forums, um, the library if you go to the MS-DOS um, page in 6.22 you get access to the um, configuration guide and I've linked all the original authors pages and stuff in the description so I'd recommend going there and reading it for yourself but we've got a machine here it needs DOS and Windows 3.1 right now I've just left Windows 95 on it for some quick and easy testing um, but yeah not period accurate for the 486 for this one um, so yeah let's crack into it all right, so the basics that we're going to need is the guide. I've printed it out to make it easy for me to read. Um, you're going to need a copy of MS-DOS. So I've got uh, my MS-DOS uh, 6.22 discs here. Uh, they're very old. I'm actually surprised they still work. Uh, the other thing I'm going to be doing is putting Windows 3.1 on the machine. So I have the Windows 3.11 for workgroups um, discs. The other thing that um, is in the guide that you might want and probably would recommend is the supplemental disc for DOS 6.22. All of this stuff's in the in the guide that I'll link. Um, also some of these apps are quite handy. P-Edit, uh, DOS Key, uh, a smaller version of Microsoft's mouse driver called CT Mouse, and an unzipping utility. Um, the other thing um, which I grabbed the wrong disk for, um, which I've got, is the Microsoft um, CD-ROM driver, so just pretend that's that. And like magic, here's the CD-ROM driver. Um, the other thing is you're going to need some drivers, so I've got some Sound Blaster 16 drivers here and this generic disc is my um, video driver which I'll use later for Windows 3.1. So with that all there and your things all gathered, we'll move over to the computer and we'll um, kick off the setup. Alright, so the MS-DOS install is pretty simple, it's the same as what you'd normally do but I am going to go um, exit, so F3, and we've got some things here, so I'm just going to go F disk, and I'm just going to um, delete the existing drive. So you can do a number 4 here, and we can see all the stuff that's on that. So it's set up as a FAT16, which is quite interesting. Um, so let's just get rid of that. So that's partition 1. Uh, and the label is HDD, it's typically what I call them. Are you sure? And it's going to blow that away. I'm going to create a new partition. Uh, yes, I want to use a maximum available size and make it active. Let it reboot. So I'm going to press F3 at the first setup. We're going to go to F disk and here, and we're going to make sure. Yeah, we've got a hard drive set, so we've got uh, two gigabytes, so that's cool. Let's format the drive the old fashioned way. This might take a few minutes uh, given the size of the drive, so we'll come back to that once it's done. Okay, so <clears throat> we are back after that format took a bit of time and it found a few bad sectors on the drive. I'm not surprised this hard drive is sort of being uh, around the block a wee bit. So that's marked those at least. So um, we know about it. We'll carry on with the MS DOS setup. So now it should actually let me go through and install it. I'm just going to assume, as I said, that you guys have done a MS DOS install before. Uh, this is kind of a supplemental thing. Tweak it a bit, um, and of course, some little tips and tricks. So, yeah, we'll just go through, feed it discs, and um, come back once um, MS DOS is set up. Alright, so DOS is all set up. Let's eject that disk, 
give it the old reboot and then we'll carry on and this is the part where you will probably want to start following the guide basically um, so we're gonna just start configuring all the stuff I've got it as I said printed out here and the first thing on the list is the supplemental utility um, it's not too hard to set up it's pretty simple but um, yeah wherever the disc is here is my DOS uh, supplemental disc of course autofocus not really doing its thing but put that in all right so it says on the guide uh, we're gonna go set up dot bat and we're gonna put that to C backslash DOS Let's run so I am going to do selected components only because I only want so many things uh, no I do not want access DOS no I don't need the keyboard utilities no I don't need the comp compressed floppy but yes I would like the DOS utilities um, I don't have a networking card but you know what let's just press yes for now because it's a small package and yes I'd like the DOS shell all right so here we got the monitor selection we are going to go F5 for VGA yep that is correct apparently when it does QBasic there is a snake like game apparently so and try and run that and see if that um, is going to work. It didn't work in the VM that I did. Um, I suspect it was a timing issue. It said could not divide by zero. DOS. And we're going to go QBasic slash run. C DOS. It's called Nibbles. It's up. Bass. Okay. We have got one player. I'll just do novice. Um, no, I won't. And we'll go to color. Hey, it actually worked. I'm guessing it's real hardware. So, uh, yeah. There we go. Look at that. Oh. We've also got a DOS shell, which I almost forgot about. Here it is. And it has a GUI mode, so we can go DOS shell. Um, and we can go backslash G. Um, and then what is it? It's colon H1 for different resolutions. So maybe we can try. Uh, H2 for a different resolution All right, so at this point in the game the basic DOS OS is installed We're gonna make a couple of directories as per the guide So we're at my C prompt and we're gonna make a DIR for apps gonna make a DIR for backup Make a DIR oops, For temp Cool Um so what we're next doing is setting up the path details so we'll look in the apps folder first um, before going to see DOS cool so now we can put all our apps basically in the app folder so for first we've got a, the, this disk here and that's got um, p edit DOS key CT mouse and the unzip utility so we'll get that going here um, for ease of use and speed up a bit of time I'm just going to go copy everything to see apps and here is everything you can do the rename command but here in the guide it says we can rename um, P edit which is a replacement oh, MS DOS editor oops edit 
it's a typical MS DOS editor. Um, but we can go move um, p edit dot exe, and we can rename that to edit dot exe. Look at that. Um, also, in the guide, um, there is a bunch of configuration things you can do. So we can exit and then go Alt F1. And we can go editor style. Um, there's like a, a bit of a list that's provided um, in, the, in that guide. So I'm reading it here. So we can go to like um, scroll bar. Make that the first one. Looking good. All right, next thing is we need to edit our config files. So auto exec dot bat. I think I typed that wrong. Here it is. We are going to add a few entries in here. We're going to go load high space c forward slash dos slash um, smart drive exe and we're gonna go load high cdos oops sorry apps and dos key dos key dot com forward slash i so that's the dos key utility i copied over that's in the guide as well. The dash i is the initialization. Really good utility, actually. And um, to make that path permanent, uh, what we'll do is we'll come over here and we'll go c backslash apps, like so. And we'll add another one. We'll go c colon backslash uh, dos forward slash net. And the last thing um, is the set d d i r c m d command and equals forward slash o colon g n e. So this is just sorting out by alphabetical order. I'm pretty sure. Could be wrong on that, but. You don't have to add it, but I'm going to add it. You know, let's give this thing a restart and see that it actually works. I think that will be probably a good thing. Got some stuff running already. Nice. We've got smart drive and stuff like that. All right, now we're going to go edit config.sys. Here we go, and we're using the correct editor this time. Okay, so. We're gonna go switches. I did have that spelled correctly. Equals forward slash F, and that is to give a bit of speed, I think, when booting from what I've read in here and we're gonna tell high memory.sys to not do its little ram test so we can go backslash test mem colon off device high equals colon c colon dos forward slash e m m 386.exe space ram space i equals b000 dash b7 ff and i believe this memory range um when we're loading oops, sorry when we're loading that into high mem is um used for mo monochrome monitors i think from the guide here and if we've got DOS set server here, we want to just take that out 
as for historical purposes for really old DOS stuff. So uh, apparently it's not needed, but you can re-enable it if you find there's apps that need it. Um, as anything older, it's probably MS-DOS three days. Boot up switches, our high mem set. We want to load up the memory manager tool, which is the EMM386. And that's loading that into high memory. Um, the other thing I forgot to do was go see a DOS dash UMB. And the UMB portion option instructs MS DOS to manage upper memory. Let's save that. Once again, reboot. Right, so we're back at the prompt again. It didn't blow up, so that's really good. So um, at this point, now that we've also got the DOS key installed, um, we can actually do tabs. And this is something I really like having because it's like um, using the command emulator on a, um, you know, on a newer machine. So we can go mem tab, look, mem.exe forward slash c which sorts the pro um the listing um and the memory manager by program and the forward slash p will pause so we can actually check out how much conventional memory we've freed up cool so we've got a little bit there we've used 65 kb of the 640 or whatever it is total um so we've got 589 there is one thing I missed um, reading back through the guide is um, at the end here you might want to put uh, break equals on and what that will allow you to do is press control C on misbehaving apps so I'm going to try and set up my CD-ROM driver I think I customized this one let's just have a look at it let's see what it does config.sys so it's added the CD drive um, stuff which is good close that we'll go edit um, auto exec.bat and here we go we'll get rid of this thing so it looks like I may, this is not customized for this install of DOS, but what we want to do is load that into high memory. So everything that you possibly can, you want to get into high memory. So uh, we'll go, um, this is auto exe dot bat. So I'm going to go to load high. There we go. Load high C, CD ROM, MS CD EX. Cool. Save that. I don't think I can add this into high memory, but we'll give it a shot. Give it a reboot and see what it does. So I've copied over the CT mouse from before. Let's see what it does. Uh, it looks like I had a bit of a mistake. I had a um, extra colon in there. So I'll close that off, give it another reboot. That's better, there's no error this time. So we can go mem forward slash c forward slash p. Sweet. So we've got 625 KB of conventional memory, which is heaps for games. Um, although we haven't done sound drivers yet. So we've got the mouse working. Look at that. What we can do is go to um, C.bat. And actually, what I'm going to do is also add a path in here. 
like that. I know it's a lot of rebooting and testing. So what I want to have happen is that I can just type eject and then it will eject the CD-ROM drive uh, because it's looking at that path. So we really need if that works. Oh, look at that. I can tab it out. Boom. Looking good. It's Windows 95 disk from years ago. Let's see. Hey, look at that. And um, once again, I can press the up key, eject that out, and we are good to go. Let's get my sound drivers going. Disk one, disk two. All right, got some installed. Okay. We don't have a Windows 3.1 path. Um, so let's just go next. So we'll go E2. It's just gonna look for everything. So it's the default value, so that's all good. We'll just carry on with that and get it going. Cool, there's the stuff there. Uh, it's going to edit those files, so we'll let it go off and we'll do, let it do that. I believe disk 2 is literally just for Windows, so I might just leave that alone just for now. Okay, so it wants us to reboot, but I'm not going to do that. I added an odd directory there. I do not know what that is, so we'll go... What is in there? Nothing. So we'll just go... Rem is it R-M-D-I-R? Ah, gone. EXE dot Batman. I love having that tab. You just go straight through. All right, so that's going to set some stuff for us. So we got the set blaster command here, which is needed for Apogee games and stuff like that. So we are going to go and try and load all this stuff into high memory. So we're going to go load high space same for this stuff load hi make sure you spell correctly which I'm not doing cool boom 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 we're gonna try and shove those into um, upper memory actually the smart drive one I will come back to I'll take that back out I got a bit ahead of myself there uh, everything else looks good so we'll save that and now we need to go edit uh, config sys check this out we'll make sure this is all good mm-hmm okay so it's deleted this so we'll just get rid of that there interesting didn't add any devices to that so guess it's not needed i almost forgot to add the path in here so let's add that to the end it's getting a bit long this actually i've noticed but that's okay Backslash SB16 Magic. Cool. Give it a reboot and we'll make sure it does its thing. Okay, that loaded really fast. I don't know if it all worked. Cool. All right, let's turn off some of this stuff. Let's get rid of this. I just love the fact that you can just tab that command out and it finds the executable and you can just hit enter and away it goes. So that is awesome. All right, so there is some system optimization stuff. The other thing we might want to enable is the power. Config.sys. Let's add it in here. Device. Hi. 
equals c backslash dos slash power dot exe or space std i think it was standard let's give that a try and see if that uh, does the trick all right so now when we type power we can see we've got the standard settings which is really good just so you're not whacking your cpu at 100 percent and just running at all full noise all the time so there is some amendments uh, mainly adding smart drive to upper memory and the cd-rom driver to upper memory and there is some extra little tweaks and things you can do with this but i'm gonna just do a real cheap basic setup so <laughs> let's get started i'm gonna go into the edit autoxc.bat and there's only two that i'm gonna change in here so we're gonna find So we are going to find our optical stuff. So I'm going to go backslash, sorry, forward slash E for extended memory. And we're going to find the smart drive, which is up here. And I want to put that into um, upper memory. I'm not going to muck around with that too much. In the guide, there are settings and buffers and things you can change and limit. Um, you can tweak that. I'm going to leave it vanilla because I think I may have freed up just enough memory. So what we can do is run Commander Keen, um, which is very it needs conventional memory to run. So great way to test it. So let's what we'll do is we'll just go mem forward slash c forward slash p let's see we've got 624 kb of conventional memory free that's fantastic um what else have we got in here we can see the mouse drivers in the upper memory power drivers smart driver the dos key thing the cd-rom driver that's all looking fantastic so you can just keep running that command and just uh, check and make sure your memory is looking great let's grab a game and um put it to the test all right can't remember if i can just run this straight from the disc um i have a patch that's in here as well which works um better on like oh god what are the, some of the other cards that um this would work better on um matrox cards ati cards where you get the juddering and things like that it's a timing issue so it looks like the game's actually frozen which is not uncommon when loading these apogee games i've found so what i'm going to do is just restart again let's just do that All right, so same issue. So there's something running that I've configured that it doesn't like, and this is just a part of, fortunately, part of doing the initial setup. So there is a key that you can press, which is F5 when it boots up. So what we'll do is let's mash that as soon as the screen passes. So we're going to hit it now. I'm just going to hold it down. So it's bypass. So there we go. Okay, so that may have been a sound detection issue for this game. Okay, so that works. So what that tells me is there's something it doesn't like in the um, auto exec back, and that might be the um, sound settings. So what we'll do is we'll stop those loading into upper memory autoexec.bat so we've got our set blaster command up there that's all good that's all good so we'll get rid of this and we'll load this back and we'll load this back let's give it a reboot Uh, 
Okay, so that stuff's all looking good. Let's check the config sys file out here. Um, yeah, everything else is all good there. So it's going to run the detection for the sound blaster. So that's just worked there. So as I said, you know, it's about finessing those small settings. You know, if you don't get it quite right, then it's not going to launch. But hey, that's, um, you know, part of dealing with DOS and, you know, the fun of configuring and setting everything up. And yeah. So the guide's by uh, legroom.net, so shout out to them for creating this, because honestly, it, there was some extra little things that I, I didn't know about. Um, so I'm just going to quit this here. But yeah, other than that, this is a really long video. Um, but hey, I wanted to just go through a physical walkthrough, how to set up the DOS environment a little bit more advanced than just the vanilla install which I've always done for the past 10 or 15 years I never grew up with DOS or QBasic or anything like this to edit and you know um, QBasic is not a good example but you know like the sort of era of technology um, Windows 95 was well established 98 was already out by the time I got into computers so you know I didn't have any games or anything to configure, so um, I've got a book on DOS for Dummies over there on my shelf, but, um, you know, it's always good having someone actually go through it step by step. Hey, this is what you can do, this is what it does, this is why you want to do it, um, and I just, you know, I like the fact that it's a super clean install, you know, we've got our conventional memory 624 KB free, that's heaps, I mean, that's heaps for most games, I mean, sure, it's not the full 640, but considering we've got sound, CD-ROM, mouse, um, you know, the DOS key, the smart drive, the power management utility, all of that stuff is running, uh, it's really nice just having this as a clean setup, so... As I said, I'm not an expert, but hey, got to start learning, and this is what I've found, and yeah, I'm going to give it a good old run-in and see how it goes, really, but yeah, anyway, guys, I'm going to wrap this one up, because it's been a long one, and um, if you found it useful, let me know, and if you have any other good tips, definitely let me know, because as I said, not an expert, but hey, this is the guide I've followed, and it seems to work pretty good, so yeah. Anyway, we'll leave it uh, to that and um, catch you guys later.